Hello, Animation, and welcome. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, we did not finish our weight painting, so I wanted to leave this tutorial with you. Um, you should be able to finish it today. So this video will be kind of a go on your own. Um, what I'm first going to do is just kind of show you each gradient for each joint and let you pause and imitate if you need to. Um, then I'm going to show you how to mirror. And then when you mirror, you might need to do a, one last little tweak. Um, and I'll, I'll discuss that when I get to it. And then the way you're going to turn it in is you're going to do a screen capture with QuickTime. Um, so you're going to scroll through all your joints on the weight paint tool, showing the weights and the color gradient. And this will wind up in your movie folder. And we'll discuss this when we get there. So the first part is going to be rather quiet. All right, I'll probably chat still. but. It's really go on your own pace, hit pause on this video, and make sure your weights are close to mine or match up to mine or just kind of get the feel for it. I'm just going to kind of pulse through them. And then I'm going to show you how to mirror. Um, so that's going to be halfway through the video. And then we'll talk about fixing the mirrors because the mirrors don't always work 100%. All right. So here's our guy. We want to save them. Command Shift, save as. And um, we'll save them, you know, link. And I believe I said call them something like uh, finishing weights or weights finishing or weights mirroring whatever's gonna work for you finishing right and um, what you're going to do is you're just gonna look as I pulse through each each joint on his left hand side or down the middle so just so you can kind of double check his weight painting now keep in mind, I'm always in one mode, and um, I'm not going to review how to do the weight painting stuff. This is more of a review of just kind of what each weight should look like. So if I go to skin, edit smooth skin, paint skin weights, options, right? So I have his root as looking something like this. Okay, so there's not much attached to the root. And I was mistaken. I believe I did say attach the belt to the root. Um, most of it's going to go to the tailbone joint. But I believe my tailbone joint, or what you have is called the tailbone, is actually going to be called the waist on this one. So just to kind of review, moving up, the toe will have nothing. The very tippy tippy top will have nothing. The ball will look like this. The ankle, something like that. And again, you can pause and double check as we move along. The knee, the knee was quite complicated. We had fun building the knee, didn't we? Something like that seems to work out best. So 75%, 50%, 25%, 100% the front. Feel free to pause. The hip, so the hip's the inverse of the knee here, right? So 25 is green, orange is 75. As the hip goes up the kilt, being shared and distributed evenly here. That's up, up the kilt. So this big portion of the leg is majorly controlled by the hip. All right, and like I said, pause, rewind, double check, take a look, you know, examine closely. So remember, we're only worrying about one side. So then I'm going to go to the waist. I believe your waist is what I call the tailbone. And so I'm giving the waist the belt. And then a 50% influence around this border, the, the shared border. All right, that's the waist. So again, just kind of pause, take a look, do what you got to do. The gut, the gut. Has 100% influence on only one line because I didn't leave a lot of geometry here. So Maya's going to be doing a lot of work interpolating this later, but the gut is basically going to move everything above the belt. Everything the belt or below goes to the waist. So there's a very tight threshold here between the waist and the gut. What I want to actually do is I'm going to skip the, the chest for now and I'm going to work my way fingers inward because that's part of the rules here is it's easier to work your way from the tips all the way down. So I'm going to start at the thumb again. Give yourself a look over there. That's where the thumb is. And then the fox. That's this white. And then the bottom's the same. So when you do the finger, just, just double check that you're always doing the bottom. The bottom's exactly the same as these. Feel free to stop, rewind. This video's for you. Pinky. The tip has nothing. I'm already on the mid. That's the mid. Prox. The outer hand joint. It's okay if you don't really nail the outer hand joint. We're not going to do much with the outer hand joint. But um, again, at the bottom, it's the same. Middle finger. And again, if you make this 75-25, um, it's not the end of the world. You'll still be holding that okay. And then the middle, prox, and the base. In the middle of the index. And these are all the same on the bottom. They are on the top. Rocks again. And again, if it's yellow here instead, that's fine. Yours might bend better that way. It's your call. Then that hand in, and I said don't don't waste a lot of time and energy here. Um, you're not gonna move these around too much for what we're gonna do. If you this is your first rig, so you know, pick your battles. And then the wrist, the wrist I, I told you to share what you thought might be hundred percent for the wrist, this is actually gonna get shared rather evenly with the forearm. And this one's yellow, and I believe another one I showed you is twenty-five percent. So you can always test it in three mode. So I'm on the wrist right now. And just see how much you want that wrist to collapse. And I'm actually gonna switch this one. All right. So once again. The wrist is collapsing quite a bit. If I give the forearm 25% of that weight instead of, notice I'm going into one moment, I think there. So I'm going to give the forearm 75% instead of 25. I'm going to replace it. It'll automatically make the other side green.
and notice so the top collapses, but then this portion of the wrist doesn't collapse as much. I kind of like it like that instead. But 50-50, I mean, having it yellow versus green, not the biggest of differences. And like I said, this is your first ring, so just, you know, work with what you like. All right, forearm. Now it's orange instead of yellow, so it could be yellow orange. What I did for the forearm, right, is I brought it all the way in, almost to the forearm, except for the one right before it. So what belongs to the elbow is right underneath. Okay. And the elbow we've discussed at length. The elbow should look something like that. Oops, sorry, that's the shoulder. The elbow should look something like that. And then the shoulder looks something like that. And you can always test these. And if they're looking like they're bending well, keep them. If not, make some adjustments and some experiments. Some of you are not using, I mean, there's a lot of you using your own unique characters, and that's great. So they're, they're, it's not going to be the same answer, but it should be something similar. Every character's going to be different. And again, pause, rewind. The clavicle gets rather complicated. You don't want the neck pulling out the clavicle, right? The neck stays rather, stays the same. But the clavicle kind of pulls up, and this is where we left off, right? So you don't want the, the neck getting pinched as the clavicle moves. So the, the neck doesn't own any bit of that, right? But the clavicle does majorly control this. It's shared a bit with um, the other things. The chest. You know, if I had it at 100%, and if I had these vertices at 100%, um, they would tuck in way too much. It would get too clapped. So I actually assign 25% to the chest and give the clavicle some of that. So again, pause, imitate, see how it's being done. And it works for you too. Oops, sorry. And th there's the chest. The chest has this stuff in the middle. Notice the chest has 75% of the neck. The chest has a lot of the neck, and it shares a little bit here with the clavicle, and it gives just a little bit to the neck. So the neck has very little. Now, I'm going to ignore these blue things. I'm going to talk about those, these blue dots here in a second when we get to bearing. But notice the neck has very little here. The chest owns the majority of these vertices along the neck. Right? So you want the neck to bend in a little, but not a lot. You want the neck to kind of twist a little, but not a lot. So that's what you do for the neck. And then, oops. lastly, so that's the neck. Neck is green. Chest. Chest is orange. Feel free to pause. Just hide the bubbles. And then the actual neck joint, excuse me, the actual head joint, starts, it's 100% all the way through here. And we'll talk again about reds and blues in a second. But it should be white all the way across the head, before the head joint. Okay. And I have the hat base. And these are the gradients. The hat. So these are just full circles. Here's the base again. That's it. Okay. So the very tip of the one doesn't have any weight to it. It's the one right above it. And again, there's no hard and fast rule here, so whatever's going to bend well. Okay. So if you've tuned me out, this is now we're going to get to the mirroring part. So that's the gradients you're going to work on. And then when you're all done with the gradients, you're going to do two things. You're going to mirror the joints, and then you're going to fix the mirroring of the joints. And I take it back. You're going to do three things. You're going to do one more. You're going to double check your joints. Oops, your joints. Um, wow, can't spell today. Double check your joints. What that, needs, what that means is, is you're going to want to go through, because you're bending and flexing your, your character, so you want to make sure your joints are all relatively zeroed out. And you want to make sure that your joints kind of haven't been moved or haven't been adjusted. And you want to make sure they're consistent on both sides. If one's slightly off, you're going to get a lot more mistakes happening when you mirror. The mirror doesn't always happen perfectly. Um, but you can anticipate some of these problems by making sure all your rotations are kind of grounded out. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just clicking on every joint. Just checking each one to be zeroed out. What do you mean by zero? I mean these zeros right here, the rotations, are all set to zero. Don't worry about translations, just worry about your zeros. Like this hip here is a little bit not zeroed out, so I'm just going to type in zero, zero, zero. And I just kind of readjust the leg. I'll check this hip too. Same thing. Got bent around a little bit. And that made him a little pigeon-toed. I'm going to undo that. And it looks like they're supposed to be symmetrical. So don't be afraid to undo if it, those are all zero. Let's see if those need, let's see what happens when I zero those out. How about this guy? There you go. So looks like I moved some of those around. That actually looks better. Zero and zero. So I've just gone through and just double check that every rotation on every joint is zero, right? That should make my mirroring go a little smoother. It's not always going to go 100%. All right. When you mirror, always be aware of what plane you're mirroring across. So if I see the red tail of this X over here, if I see this red X jutting, jutting across to the right, that means I'm going to mirror across the YZ plane. If I see a blue tail jutting across the other way, I'm going to mirror across the XY plane. But most of you... As you follow my instructions, you're going to be mirroring across the YZ plane. So to mirror your joints, you click on your character, hit skin, edit smooth skin, mirror skin weights, options, 
And then these options here, again, most of you are gonna choose the YZ plane. And if you mirrored on his left-hand side or what we're viewing as our right-hand side, but your character's left-hand side, this is the positive side of the graph. So you want the positive weight to go to the negative side. If you accidentally weight painted on this side, just uncheck this box. So most of you are gonna be doing this. There's one or two of you that might be doing across the X and the Y. Um, closest point of surface, closest joint, and then you hit mirror. Okay, and now um, this should be evenly distributed across. However, you're gonna, you're gonna have a few problems. There's gonna be some imperfections. It's not perfectly symmetrical for whatever reason for most of you. Some of you might be set, but you're gonna go back and you're gonna go back to Edit Smooth Skin, Paint Skin Weights Tools, Options, and you're gonna double check every single joint. So I hit root here and I have a problem. I have some zeros. So here, here's basically the rule. It's gonna be pretty good. Your mirrors are gonna be pretty good. However, you're gonna have some red spots. Now remember on your rainbow right here, the red is not exactly 100%. It's usually in the 90 range and your blue is the under 10 range. So. I know I've been drilling it into your head, don't zero out, don't go down. If it's blue, you can make the value zero and, and just zero it out, okay? Or you can work your way back to the other thing. So I can go to the, the hip right. If it's red, I can make it 100. So I'm just gonna go through, if I see something red, I make it, a, oops, I make it 100. Or one, the value one. So all these are red, I'm just gonna kinda wait those out. We want, and when I do that, the blue should also go away. So I can do it one of two ways. I can send these reds away by making them one. So it didn't do it perfectly. That's okay. So if you see it as red, make it a one as a white. Okay. I'm going to experiment. It should be minimal. I know I said don't do it. Let's see. If I hit zero and make these blues black, wow, it even got down here. Make these blues black, Let's see what happens. Does it randomly distribute or does it know where to go? Almost. So now these reds here, I'm gonna make white. So I go here and make this red white, right? Reds you make white, blues you make zeros. Or if I know, I know that these are gonna watch, the ankle's gonna be red. So I can just paint, paint these out. So basically, go through, if you see a blue, ignore it until, until you've covered all your red white. And if you still have a blue, then go ahead and zero it out. But once you kind of get this down, you shouldn't have to zero out any blues. Let's see, there's a little blue right there. Let's go back to my ankle. There's a little red, it was hard to catch. Something like that. All right, that's set nicely, let's go to the waist. Now your other side should be fine, nothing should have affected your left hand side. It's just your, um, so that part. It's just your right hand side. So I'm just gonna go to here. I'm gonna zero it out. I'm gonna be very lazy. It might miscalculate and put it on the root instead of the other place, but I'm gonna risk it. It's such a small amount. I'm gonna be okay with that. My waist, perfect. I'm just gonna keep going. My gut should be okay. Uh, got a little bit here. That means it's just it now. In this case, you're not gonna see obvious reds of those blues. Just zero them out, right? So you know this is supposed to look like that. I'm gonna replace that with zero and a little dangerously and let that be randomly signed elsewhere. Go to my chest. I'm gonna zero these out as well. We're just like I said, we're gonna live a little dangerously. Let's see, should the clav right have that? Nope, I'm gonna do it. Oop. So zero them out. I know some of you have been so well, you've been listening so well, and I, I've been pressing this rule so much, it hurts even to do it a little bit. You hurts me to demonstrate this and put this on the internet. But it's, it's literally minuscule. It should go away just fine. Uh, now I got a clav right, I got a little bit there. And I'm always gonna double check my left and right counterpart. Sometimes that, that helps. Now this should make my shoulder red. All right, now, I'm not gonna get rid of this because that's green. That's more of a green tone to it. I'll check my shoulder. So I got a little red on my shoulder. So I'm gonna make that 100% or one. If you're unsure, look back at your count. That's how I want it. Okay, and if, like, I'm not sure what was supposed to be there, so I'm gonna check my shoulder here. I have no weight there for my shoulder. It's okay, I'm gonna go to my right shoulder and zero those out. Hopefully they go to the right place, which is I want them to go to the chest, not the clav. Good, so it's set. So a little blue is okay to zero out, but only if it's blue, well, if and only if it's blue. And you could also do it with the reds here. But I'm gonna go here at one, and zero those out. And then these, probably quicker just hit zero. And let those weights fall where they may. Now the hands always have a few details. I'm gonna work my way out and in. So like there's the thumb. So I have no idea where else that weight would have gone, but I'm just gonna make those, oops, I'm gonna make those one. And then keep working your way in. So if it's red, make it one. So notice when I work my way outside in, I'll come across a lot more red. If I work my way inside out, 
I'll get a lot more, um, I'll see a lot more blue. I'm just gonna zero those out. Yeah. So it's a little dangerous living, but it isn't like a little dangerous living. Like I said, blue is the only time you can do it. Red, red going to one's always a lot easier. Now, this one, you see, don't go red to zero, that will be a disaster. So that's something you need to make up. So make sure you go to your index tip here. And this guy got really, my hand got really messed up. It looks like my hand was slightly off sync. It wasn't symmetrical for whatever reason, so it's just getting corrected now. Okay. And. Make that 0.75 to match. Get in there. You can always check your counterparts. I'm not going to. But if you're ever unsure, check the opposite side. Just make it look like the opposite side. And just screenshot if you have to. Ooh. And this is just clean your left. Alright, good. Ooh. Good. And awesome. Um, then you're all set to go. And so when you're all done with that, you're just going to do one last save as, command shift save as, and you're going to call it your character name, and you're going to call it wait, and you're going to call it mirrored, because you are done. And if you want to call it done, you're going to turn this in by just doing a save as, you're going to turn in a Maya file. All right. So you're not going to do any anything too complicated. You're just going to, um, it's called char weights. So I want you to do two save as is. I want you to have a weight mirrored to indicate that you're done and do one last save as file save scene as and go ahead and call it five underscore char weights underscore your last name. And please make it a Maya ASCII file, um, not a Maya binary. Save it to your desktop or a folder if you have it and go ahead and drop that off into the submit folder. So, um, very easy way to submit. You don't have to play blast this one. Just do a save as and call it Char's Weights and put it into animation submit. So once again, period Char Weights last name. But it's not a it's not a play blast. It's a save as. All right. Um, hope you enjoyed that lesson, and I hope you got it done. Thank you for watching.